Hi, this is Andrew Koss at Terminus Recording Studios in New York City. I wanted to take a few minutes to show you one of my favorite techniques using Omnisphere by Spectrosonics. Omnisphere is one of the most powerful and in-depth soft sense on the market, and when you take the time to really get under the hood, you start to see just all that it's capable of doing. These examples are going to use the envelopes in Omnisphere to control and shape the sounds we're playing. So first let's look at a patch with these techniques not implemented yet, so we can hear how it originally sounded. I'm just going to play some notes on my keyboard. So just a big power synth. Let's pull up the first example. And one of the things that makes Omnisphere so cool is it takes the traditional ADSR envelope that you'll find on almost every synth, and it blows it way out. So let's click on this and open up the envelope editor. And now we can see this very long, very detailed envelope shape. You'll see spikes and squares and little rises, dips, multi-rhythmic pulses, and you get full control over all these things. You can really control the shape and the placement. Now you can snap these to the grid so it stays in tempo. And you can zoom in so you get a closer look really tight in there or way out. You have speed control and depth. You can loop it, sync it to the clock. So I've taken the shape that I've made. Now if we go into the modulation matrix, we can see that mod envelope one is going to the amplitude. And I've also sent it to the filter cutoff to give it a little shape to the sound. And what this means for the amplitude is that the volume of this patch is gonna follow the envelope shape. So if I hit a chord and just hold it, watch what happens. Let's move it around a little. You can really create this awesome gated arpeggiator feel, but it has way more dynamic control than any gate or arpeggiator would generally give you because you have so much dynamic control, the volumes and how they decay and swell. Now, if we look at mod two, I've made another shape. Let's zoom out here, and scroll over. So you'll see that it starts with a spike, it has a big swell up, and then a bunch of silence. Now what I've done is if we go back to the modulation editor, you can see envelope two is doing the same thing as envelope one was, both amplitude and cutoff. But below it, we have the mod wheel controlling the depth, which is how much it's sending to the amp up here. Now you can see I've set them opposite each other, and I've inverted the second one here. So as I move the wheel, you'll see I'm essentially crossfading between which envelope is driving the amp. What this means is that I can crossfade between envelope one and envelope two here. So let's listen to envelope two. If I move the mod wheel down, we'll hear the original one. So you can kind of toggle between the two as you play or sequence in that after and create a dynamically evolving rhythm. just allows for you to create these really intricate rhythms that would be extremely difficult to program on your own. So if we go to the next example, so it's over here, this is a melodic example, this version. Now this one, you'll see the lines that I've drawn in. And if we go back to see what it's controlling in the modulation matrix here, you see that the amplitude, instead of amplitude, we're using pitch course, which is the pitch of the synth. Now with pitch stuff, I found you have to be really careful and kind of find the sweet spot on the settings to get something that you can kind of keep reins on because it starts going really over the top fast. But you can see I have it just dialed up a little, which I think gave me about two octaves. And if I go back to our envelope and hold a note down, this is gonna sound a little strange as it is at this point, but you'll see what's happening across the timeline as I hold down a low A. If we take that a step further, because it could definitely use some rhythmic control in there, otherwise it sounds a bit odd. Let's see, I've made an arpeggiator pattern here with some medium-length notes, really quick stutters, 
longer ones, some really long ones. And these have all been drawn in to match the shapes that I've put in the envelope. So if we turn that on, and I find this patch sounds really cool with the tempo cranked up a little bit, take a listen to what happens here. It's pretty cool. Now, you can start moving your hands around the keyboard and see what you get. You might get some really neat things by changing the note. And if you play legato, you'll keep the arpeggiator and the envelope going. So let's see what happens. You could have a lot of fun with this. And of course, you can make your own rhythms and try all sorts of things. You can make take away notes. Keep playing with it and have a blast. So the next example here is using more of a bass patch. I've started with the same general idea of having two rhythms, one with some really quick stutters early on and one without them. And if we take a listen, I think this one is best slowed down a bit. Let's try it here. Oh, that's number two, here's one. And the second rhythm. Now, of course, you can move your hands too and create a. So, again, some really cool dynamic control of your sounds. So, let's keep looking at this further. Here in version number two, I've used Omnisphere 2's new note control in the arpeggiator, it's pitch control, and created a basic arpeggiation pattern. But you'll see it drops down an octave and then up a third, fifth, seventh, twelfth, fifteenth. And back here in the main, you'll see I have the glide time up a bit. And that will create a nice portamento effect going in between the notes as it goes down the octave and up. So let's hear that one. And I'll hold down a key and you'll see what happens. So it's pretty cool. And you can, of course, change these, take away the stutters if you don't care for them. It's a lot of fun things you can do here. And we can go another step back to the original shape. And this time I've entered a third envelope with its own design in here. Now see also, by the way, if you right click in here, you can change what the thing looks like. So if we wanted to add pulses instead, or just go back to a curve, we can really keep playing with it. Make sure I didn't ruin anything there. Great. So now in this one, if we go back to the modulation control, we can see mod envelope three is controlling the filter cutoff and the resonance. And I've actually inverted them so that as one goes up, the other goes down. What this will do is add a nice filtering texture to the same sound that we just heard. So let's go look at the envelope again. And here you can see this filter shape. And I'll hold a note down. <laughs> Of course, you can drop that down or control how fast it gets down there. And you can mess with the speed if you wanted to make it a little more dramatic and slow it way down. So there's just endless potential of creative rhythms that you can try and mess with and see what happens if you change the, the lines and change the timing of it. And you, you just keep playing and find cool new ideas that will really sit incredibly well inside a track and also feel like you spent three days making them. <laughs> One more for you that I really love is this pad example. Now you'll see, we'll go back to the one and two envelope shape idea, and you'll see one that's a bit more complex rhythmically, and then another one that's a much slower, long attack, and then the loop is off so that it just holds when we get to the end here. And we can actually switch this to note, which I find quite musical for this version. 
which means that it will re-trigger every time I press a new note as opposed to waiting for me to stop playing legato like this might be. Now, the difference on this one is instead of using the mod wheel, which is what we had been doing to switch between envelope, en envelope one and two, I'm using velocity. So what that means is if I play softly, I'm gonna get one envelope, and if I play hard, I'm gonna get the other. So let's hear what happens. Let's go back here. Let's take a listen to what happens. If I play soft, we should hear this one. Just a lovely sound. Now if I hit hard, because I'm going to start to bring in this rhythm, if I hit fairly hard, you'll start to hear a bit of that texture. Now if I pound on the key, so this is a gorgeous way to start to give your pads and soft keyboard patches a bit of texture that matches your playing style, and you can manipulate the depths and things to get a place where you're really comfortable, but it allows you to play kind of soft. But really, all these techniques just start to dive into what's possible here, because when you start to look at just what you can modulate with that envelope. I mean, look at all these oscillator functions, filtering functions, amps, the LFOs, all the aux and multi-effects that are inside Omnisphere, all these layer effects. You can just start going crazy. You can use it to control the length of the notes in your arpeggiator and draw in this 24-bar crazy rhythmic control of your arpeggiator that you've programmed. It's really just endless, and it's a blast, and it just creates complexity and musicality out of a instrument that's not real which is a wonderful addition to music when you're working in software like this so i hope this gives you some ideas and inspiration and please follow us if you'd like to stay up to date with new videos that we're releasing and thank you so much <laughs>